All right. So next we have uh, Mr. Sheldon Sundown. He's like a magician, an uncle. He's from uh, Seneca Nation, and he's going to be performing some traditional and contemporary music for us. Some of you may have heard his voice before. He'll uh, come and visit us over here at our Wequemkong powwows. And he usually does some smoke dance singing for us. So I'm going to pass over to Mike to Mr. Sheldon Sundown. Give him a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be back here on Wiki. Uh, I never uh, expected to be up here twice in one year. It's good to be up here with the start of your winter. It's nice and cold. Eh? But uh, I'd like to thank uh, the Majibanjig and uh, Jason and all the crew over there and, uh, for inviting me up here. They called me last Thursday and says, uh, we got you scheduled. I says, for what? And uh, they said for the festival. So it's a good surprise to come up here. So we packed up and we came right up here on Thursday. And big shout out to Gordy for uh, hosting us over there at his bed and breakfast. And uh, everyone taking good care of us over here in Wiki. Uh, I have a lot of good friends here. I've been coming here since uh, around 1981. I think the first time I came here to the Pow I was a young man. I used to come here with my... Uh, Grandma Esther Sundown back in the day, she would come here and dance powwow and I would run around and that was my uh, wiki experience and ever since then I've been coming. I got asked to come and share a little bit of our culture over from the Haudenosaunee people, Six Nations people throughout western New York and Canada and uh, Quebec. One of the things that are taught in our and our teachings is our affiliation and our, uh, our uh, dealings and uh, meetings that our Seneca people had with, the, uh, with your people up here in the islands and the area way back 1800s, 1700s, late 1700s when the Sullivan campaign came through and they were uh, terrorizing our nations and burning our villages. And we weren't sure that we were we were going to get run off or not. And one of the meetings they had, they came up here and they met with uh, your leaders back in those days to secure some lands just in case we had to get out of town and get away from all the uh, killing and burning. But uh, that never did happen. But that was our affiliation and meeting with uh, people from up here in Manitoulin Islands. And uh, it was a, it's a good teaching. It's a lot of things that get handed down. And in fact, I think when I was here at Wiki Pawa, I did see that in uh, one of the books, the Pawa books. But I was talking yesterday. I came here to visit. And that, uh, I'll get into that word in a little bit about visit. But I was talking with some gentlemen over there at the uh, corn soup where they were, uh, they were uh, burning the ashes with the corn. And one of the things that they asked me, they asked me if we have songs for when they're doing that particular kind of uh, that corn boiling. And uh, they also asked about different songs, about doing different things. And in our way, a lot of our songs, some of our songs are named after what we're doing. We have a dance called Sharp the Stick Dance, and that was, uh, that was uh, named after a gentleman that created these songs while he was uh, carving. And it was a fast style dance, like you see our smoke dance when we come here. But the, when we do our dances, they dance anywhere from the half hour to an hour long, each set of our dances. And our dances are really fast, a lot of them, some of them are slow. But getting back to that, our songs about uh, honoring, and um, particularly like the boiling that corn, we do in our, in our way, we have a dance that we call the Oneo Oino. And in our language, that means the corn dance or the corn songs. And uh, I put, I've had one on one of my CDs, and I put that on there. It's one of my favorite songs, but I'd like to sing that song for those gentlemen over there that were uh, asking about that. I see him out here right now, and uh, I was thinking about him all night and wanted to sing the song for them over there. And this is what, uh, a song from O'Neill, and uh, it's our corn songs. I'll sing one for you. Yeah, 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 yeah
for those gentlemen over there. As I was saying earlier uh, with the Vajama Jig and the events that they're holding, there's a good events. Uh, I was, uh, I used to I hold big events back home like this for our people. And one of the things that I've seen throughout uh, the things that I do, I've seen a lot of dissension between the uh, Native Americans from my reservations as opposed to the ones that live in the city. And I seen a dissension there, and there was always a line there, imaginary line separating these, our communities. And I seen it, and I could feel it. So I went to one of my elders one time, and I asked him, I says, how can I heal this? He says, you'll never heal it. You'll never see it in your lifetime. He says, but you can start. He said, a long time ago in our community, everybody knew what each other was doing because we would visit. We would go to each other's houses. We would go help each other, maybe get food, maybe get wood for our fires, keep each other warm, help our elders out. He said, and everybody would visit. And as time came through and society brought money into our communities, it created greed. It created family isolation. It put us in that spot where we didn't want other people to have what we had because we had worked for it. Not all of us worked for it. The individual worked for it and put us in that situation because of what society's done to us and taught us and still teaching us today. And I like to push this. I MC a lot of events all over North America, Canada, powwows, festivals. And one of the things I like to push is what this, uh, this elder taught me. He was a chief of the Wolf Clan over in Tonawanda, Senecas. And one of the things he told me to remedy the situation and to help start it is to have events such as these without procedure, without protocol, and to just let everybody visit. And that way, if everybody starts visiting a little more and starts seeing a person from here or seeing a person from there, we'll start accepting each other a little bit more and get rid of what society's put into us. So let's have a big round of applause for Dabajimajig and everybody out there sitting, visiting. I sing with a drum group called Mystic River. And I've been singing with them for uh, 27 years now. We started that drum group a long time ago. When we were young, we started that drum group. And through the years, I took it for granted, as well as the other singers, because we were young. And as we grew, I realized the power of music. I seen what music can do. Music to our people is our connection to the creator. Again, like the song I sang for the gentleman over the corn. We have other things that we do. We have prayer songs. We have uh, songs, uh, individual songs. We have songs for uh, our veterans. And that is our connection to prayer through those songs, because those songs go. And one of the things I was always taught, we have all these singers that say, oh, I made this song, I made this song, this is a brand new song. To me, it's not a brand new song, because we weren't here way back when. These songs carry through. These songs are always in the air. They're always in the wind, and they always come from Mother Earth. And they always glide by us when these windy days like this those songs will glide by us and put us in our ear and they'll make us think that we made a song. Meanwhile, that song was always here from Mother Earth. But one of the songs I like to sing when I talk about this is we have a lot of people out there in this world 
our native people, people of all colors, of all races, of all religions, living out there in a bad way that don't, that don't even know that we're here having such a good time today. They're out there living in a bad way, and I think about those people. There's people that are incarcerated. There's people that are in hospitals. There's people that can't leave their house. There's people that we don't know are home that can't leave their house. That's why I really encourage us to always visit. Check on your family. Maybe you haven't talked to somebody in a long time. Maybe you wonder how they're doing, but you never went over to check. And then the next thing you know is the inevitable. We need to start jumping before the inevitable and visiting with our family. Because we only have so much time, every one of us, on Mother Earth. But while we're here, we need to be responsible and be a human being and start taking care of one another. And we can start enforcing that within our communities, especially within our native people, and stop the internal racism and everything that's involved. And if we include everybody, we'd be much stronger. I heard them talking up here earlier about the treaties. I know it's not a thing for all of our people, but in the actuality and the reality of it all, this whole yard should have been full listening to that. But it wasn't that way, and that's why we have our leaders taking care of things. And I have a lot of respect for our leaders. They have a hard job. Some of us don't have good things to say sometimes. Some of us have real good things to say sometimes. But in the reality of it all, our leaders are taking care of things that we're not doing and we're staying home. So and again, let's have a big round of applause for all those chiefs that came out here. I really respect that. When I was here last month for Wiki Powell, I asked my brother, I says, how is your language so strong? At home, we're fighting to hold our language. Out of the maybe 10,000 total of the Haudenosaunee people, we only have maybe 150 actual fluent speakers. And then I come up here and everybody speaks, and it's a good thing, and I'm very proud, and it makes me proud to see all of our children here talking in their language, right to, all the way right to our elders. Everybody's talking their language. You guys are very strong. To me, you guys are super strong, and I really love that because that's what the Creator put us on the earth with for that language. But I'd like to sing a song for those people out there I was talking about that don't know we're here having such a good time and, li and having a good day because there's a lot of people out there not having a good day. And I'd like to ask all of our young people, our elders, you're excused, but I'm asking all of our young people if you could please stand for this song. This is a very important song. So if you could please rise. Elders, you're excused. I realize that. But I'd like to sing a song and have our people rise for this song. Because this song is for those people out there that we need to think about, that we need to be responsible and be human beings and check on our elders, check on our people that are out there, check on those people that we don't even know about. Well, this is a prayer song talked to me by my late brother, Kenny Merrick Jr. He was here with me two years ago. He was that great big guy singing with me over here at the host drum spot. And he's taught me a lot. And he's taught me the way to be and think as a human being. But this song is for all those people that we need to think about. And while I'm singing this song, I want you to pray and I want you to think about people out there in such a bad way. Because that's what these songs are for. It's a prayer song. I'd ask that uh, if you're recording or uh, with your phones, if you could please just put them away just for this song. This is a very, very good sacred song. It's a song that we share with all our people. But this is a prayer song. Oh, I want Yeah. 
adiero, ne va adiero, fe. like to sing that song. It makes me feel good to send our prayers out to our people out there in the world that, uh, again, I don't know we're here having such a good time that we're able to visit. We're, a lot of us are in good health. Some of us are, aren't in good health. So some of us are still here. But that prayer song is for everybody that's trying to keep on and keep things okay. So I appreciate you standing for that. In our way, I came here a couple of years ago, and uh, again, this past year, I was your head smoke dance singer, and uh, I'll talk about that, where that came from. Long time ago, we used to have, when we were at war as well, I mean, I'm sure your people had your songs. In fact, I was talking with uh, Jerry Lewis when I was here with the, uh, with the, uh, for the powwow last month, and he was teaching me a little bit about that, about your ways, and uh, it was a good day, and he sang me some old songs, some old warrior songs and things like that, and uh, it really made me good to hear those, what he had to share with me. But back home, we used to have those too, and one of the th highlights of the powwows is that smoke dance. I wish I could have brought a dancer with me. There's a lot of events going on all over North America right now, and uh, it was hard for me to bring somebody to come and dance for me to, for the one song. But I'll explain it to you anyway, of what you've seen last month with that smoke dance. That's what it's called, smoke dance. Now, a long time ago, it was called Wasase, and it was a, our, our war dance, the dances we used to do when we come back from the hunt or before we would go to war or even before the hunt, and it would get us psyched up and ready to go. As time went by, we had a gentleman come through, they called him the peacemaker, and he set forth procedure and protocol where we didn't have to be at war no more. Things were settled with everybody. This was before European culture came to North America, and things were settled between our tribes, and we buried our weapons, and they called that the white roots of peace. So th this, this dance kind of died out, and through time, I don't know, there's a, we're all young here. A long time ago, there was a, there was a thing called the uh, World's Fair back in the early 1900s, Pan American. And a lot of tribes were in that showcase from all over North America. They would showcase their style of dancing, what they did. I remember the Comanches were there and their, their horses, and they would show how they would ride their horses, and the Sioux, and the Iroquois, and so forth. But like when we're sitting here doing these shows and everybody's visiting and whatnot, there's downtime. So they would get together and share their songs. And the Osage people of Oklahoma were sitting with the Haudenosaunee people and they were messing around with their songs. And they came up with a fast style because they liked our fast style of dancing as opposed to their fancy feather style. And they would contest on the shows against each other. And... Uh, Therefore, the smoke dance was born. It was derived from our fast style of dancing, our social dancing in the longhouse, as well as our ceremonial style of dancing. Some of that's fast, too. 
But I want to sing one of those slow songs where this, this dance had come from. Uh, I'm, I really take to this style of uh, our, our ways, and I like to uh, share our culture all over North America, the world. And uh, again, this slow style where it was derived from, and then I'll sing a fast, talk about the fast one and sing a fast one, how it evolved into the fast style. But this is the slow style, how they used to do way back in the, before they would go on the hunt or they'd go to war. The songs have changed. They put away them old songs and they use a contemporary style of singing and song now. Time went by, the dances sped up, and they started doing the uh, audience applause of the winner of the group, and there was a fast style, and the women were judged on their elegance, doing a fast style of dancing, the men were judged on how they hit the hops and the stops, and everyone stopping on time, and their uh, story while they were dancing, and this is how it was uh, sped up. catch up on our time schedule and whatnot, and uh, again, I'd like to thank uh, everyone uh, for uh, being here today, coming out. I know we had some uh, rough weather to think about this morning, and uh, I feel the struggle for the Bajama jig and uh, with that uh, rain coming around and whatnot, and uh, I'm glad that turned out to be a very nice day. Let's have a big round of applause for that, having a beautiful day. Uh, it's always a blessing. Before, before we go, I'd like to sing you one more of our songs. These songs that we sing are for everybody. And when you, we're always taught in our way. Always treat our visitors good. Always share our culture with our visitors. Right, way back in the day, people would come into the village before European and when culture came. We would have our villages, and people would come to our villages. Maybe they'd come in a bad way. Maybe they were hungry. Maybe they weren't in good health. 
And it was our job and it's in our teachings to make sure that we take care of everybody and we make sure that they can stand on their own and when they leave our village, that they leave our village in a good way and that they leave our village healthy and they leave our village feeling good. And that's the way I'm going to be leaving Wiki. I'm going to be feeling good because I, 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 in my language, it would say, we would say, Gnukwa Sha Kawe Wiki. And that means, I love Wiki. How? Thank you.